Hey, it is good to be with you today. This is Pastor Drew Bratchard from Riverside Christian Assembly. We're continuing our study on the poor ways that people handle conflict. There's a lot of them. Last time we looked at people that ended all on their own terms, talking about suicide. Today we see something much more common, that we all have friends and family members. Perhaps you yourself is one of the poor ways you handle conflict, by drinking, doing drugs, substance abuse, trying to numb the mind, trying to escapism through the physical reality, altering your mind, altering your state. So you don't have to face reality. It's a very poor way to handle conflict. Well, today we want to take a few minutes to think about the scripture. Those people that tip the bottle a little too far back. The Proverbs warns us that it's like a, a drinking strong drink is like a snake. It's going to bite you. It's going to get you. And it's not for kings. It's not for princes. It's not for important people. Friend, if you're listening to me, you're probably somebody important. You got kids. You got friends. You got family members, teammates, coworkers. People are looking to you. So you got to have good judgment. You got to be like a king, like a prince. But when princes start to drink, disaster ensues. I think of King David, his crown prince, his son, oldest son, his name was Amon. And Amon, he had eyes for his half-sister Tamar. He emptied out the house, listened to bad advice, ended up raping the girl. And she ran to her brother Absalom, and she became a desolate woman, never had kids, never got married. And Absalom plotted for a way to get revenge. When David found out what had happened, he was angry, but really didn't do anything about it. Well, several years later, Absalom invites David and Amon to his house for a party. David should have picked up the clues, but he didn't. David sent Amon there saying, go celebrate with your brother. Well, Absalom was still furious. And while Amon was drinking, while he was defenseless, while he didn't even realize what was going on, Absalom gave the signal and they stabbed him. He died without any conflict, any resistance. Many years later, there was another king, a king by the name of Eliah. And it says, while he was busy getting drunk, one of his own generals killed him. Isn't it incredible that people spend hours of their day going to the gym, working out, eating healthy, people take martial arts class, they'll go all kinds of gun training, and then they'll drink and they'll find themselves utterly, totally defenseless. People go to college, they go to school, they get good education, and then they drink and they numb their brain and make the poorest decisions imaginable. There was another king by the name of Ben-Hadden, king of the Syrians. He had an alliance of 32 kingdoms all lined up to crush the Israelites. But he was busy getting drunk one day. And he found out that only 7,000 soldiers of Israel, the young princes of the province, were coming against him. And drunk men give drunk advice and give drunk orders. And he said, go take them all alive. Take them alive? Those 7,000 men came crushing down and killed man after man after man after man until the victory was theirs. And Ben hadn't had to flee. You see, poor judgment will cost not just you, but your friends, your family, your co-workers, and those that watch over you. This is a very poor way to handle conflict. People praise Noah for being the savior of the earth, and truly, he found grace in the eyes of God. But the first thing he did when he got off that boat was he planted a vineyard. And when he had that vineyard, the wine came, he fermented it, and he was getting drunk one day. And as he was getting drunk, his sons came, and he was naked, and Ham did something. And Ham was hamming it up, and Ham tried to get his brothers while his father was drunk and naked, and he did something to him. And they covered up the shame. They put up a cloth and, 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 and walked him out backwards. But when Noah came to, when Noah sobered up, he cursed him. He cursed his own son and his great-great-great-great-grandsons to slavery and to a hard living because he was drunk. Years later, there would be another man named Lot that would be rescued out of Sodom. Just he and his two daughters survived the destruction of the Lord upon that city. And his two daughters said, we want to have kids and maybe there's nobody left. The Lord sent fire, hail, and brimstone. Maybe it's just us. What should we do? I want to have more kids. I want to repopulate. I want to be a mom. And so they knew that their father loved the bottle. And so they got some wine, they passed it to him, and they took advantage of him. They slept with their own father. That's where the Moabite people come from. What disaster ensued because the man got drunk. The minor prophets warn of drunkenness. They say, others will get you drunk so they can look up your skirt, so they can take advantage of you. It's a shameful thing. For nothing good happens with drunkenness. People get drunk because they want to avoid, they want to numb it. In the New Testament, the word for witchcraft is pharmacy. We get our word pharmacist from it. And in ancient times, in Old Testament times, uh, the, the witch doctors or the, the holy men, oftentimes they would conjure up different remedies from the earth. They, they would be drug dealers. And so people would come to them to forget their sorrow, to, to go into hallucinations. And the same is no different. But after you hallucinate, after your hangover, after you go to the restroom, there's no real difference. Jesus on the cross and all the agony he went to that they lifted up, they hoisted up some myrrh and some, some, some uh, alcohol that he might just have a moment of relief, that he might numb himself just for a moment. And he refused it. He faced life. Life is supposed to have pain in it. 
Life is supposed to be something we deal with and we overcome. And through that, we come closer to God. Friend, you got to deal with your problems. Ignoring them and being distracted in life. Be it a drink every night or going, getting drunk or whatever it is, friend. That's not the solution to your conflict. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, we come to the true solution. Be not drunk with wine, which leads to dissipation, which leads to destruction, which leads to foolishness. But be drunk in the Holy Spirit. Each and every day, ask God for His Holy Spirit to be poured out in your life, that you might have the courage to face that day. You see, drunkenness brings about joy, brings about laughter, brings about an openness. You don't need alcohol to do that. You can be drunk in the Holy Spirit. You can have true spiritual joy with no hangover. Spend time seeking God, saying, God, I want a, a renewed sense of your Spirit. He wants to pour that new wine into new wineskins each and every day. His mercies are new. Friend, you can face the day, handle conflict righteously, not foolishly, by spending time in the Word of God and being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the way to overcome. Drunkenness is not for you, friend. You're a king. You're so important. Give it to those that are dying, that have nothing to live for, but not for you. We'll catch you again.